Hi, I'm Jackie Hardy, and welcome to our NDG Live viewers. Well, we're excited to be doing another segment on our Broadway Dallas productions that are being performed here in the Dallas and Fort Worth area. And this production is My Fair Lady. We're so excited to be able to speak with one of the cast members who happens to be a local native of the Dallas area, Mr. Richard Coleman. We know you're going to enjoy this candid conversation as he discusses a little bit about his journey that led him to where he is today. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Coleman, for uh, certainly giving us your time to uh, be interviewed by North Dallas Gazette. Absolutely. We are an African-American owned and operated uh, newspaper. I love. <laughs> I hear you. That's right. Yeah. And so we um, are always trying to tell stories that we know our viewers will, will be interested in. And you are a Dallas native, so we I already am. know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, we'll just get in on the interview. Um, I know you are, man, you are playing some roles here, right? Because you have oh, like, you. yeah, two roles, Jamie. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm um I'm in the ensemble and then and the I'm ensemble. doing a bunch of different smaller roles in the show oh. as well. Um I'm playing Jamie. I'm also in the featured singing quartet for the Loverly um song. And then mm -hmm. also there's one more I'm sure, um one of the, the dancers for the the waltz scene that we have as well. Wow. How yeah. do you prepare for that? That and aren't you an understudy? Yes, That's and I'm also understudying one, I mean, one of the leads as well. You have a, an amazing memory. That's what that says. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you prepare for that? Well, I mean, as far as the memory part, um, my uh, degrees and my background was in opera originally oh. when I went to school for it. And so, you know, after learning some yeah. three-hour Italian yeah. operas, you kind of get good at That's processing right. pretty quickly. Sure. Um, <laughs> but we were... <laughs> rehearse a lot and um our music uh supervisor um Dar David Andrews Rogers um he's fantastic and uh, keeping us up on everything and um our our entire support uh creative team has been so good at just rehearsing with us and getting us making us feel comfortable with everything and uh it, it always feels fresh um, right even though we do the show so, gosh, eight times a week in a different city every week, it just, it, it keeps it fresh because every single show Absolutely. is different and every venue yeah. is different. And the, for instance, the last place we were at, um, it was the, th the theater was a lot smaller. The stage was a lot smaller. So we had to basically re kind of stage wow. the whole show. Like, yeah. Logistically. Like yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Man. So <laughs> it's it's always wow. something different when you're yeah. on the stage. Yeah, and even that can kind of affect you a little bit, you know? Sure, yeah, definitely. Sure. Sure. I mean, being in a dancer team and, you know, usually have all this space <laughs> and now you got like two feet, you exactly. know? <laughs> so, like, you got to exactly. make sure you don't bump into somebody. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Or if you do, make it look good at least. <laughs> right. right, exactly. And, you know, I did read, um, just doing a little research on you, yeah, that you, opera is, is kind yeah. of your discipline. Man, that that's incredible. Kind of what started you on that path out of curiosity? Yeah, so I um so and when I was in Dallas, I was very involved with music and choral music and everything. Um, okay. I was part of uh, the uh, youth chorus of Greater Dallas for a little bit, um, and then I went to Cedar Hill High School where I was yeah all choir and everything. And everything. <laughs> oh, too much, honestly. And. Um, <laughs> While I was doing um, the Allstate um, choir auditions, um, one of the judges actually found me after the announcements and everything. Okay. Um, which is actually a big deal because it's it's all anonymous. So she had to really search to find me. Yeah. And um, she had asked me, you know, had you ever thought about doing classical music? Because especially as it was me and a couple other guys, and especially as young black men, it's not something that's ever really in your okay. mind no it's not it's not common for sure right it's not common at all and yeah. she was expressing me like you have a beautiful voice and if this, would, this voice would work for that and so when I was you know 18 trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life um and yeah. ended up going to LSU on a music scholarship and so okay. I was doing um I was doing classical music and opera for a while um, through my master's as well. And then yeah. I hit a point and decided to transition into doing mostly musical theater, which is what okay. I do now. Yeah. Um, 
which presents its own separate set of issues and everything difficulties sure. but um I think now is kind of the the right balance for me and I still do some opera and, and okay kind of combining both worlds both okay. of it yeah that's that's awesome and, and that's the other thing you just have such a unique diverse background and I'm sure yeah. that has bode well for you yeah. Honestly, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of it, the level of training that I was able to get um, sure. for over those years I was in college and everything really kind of set me at another level. I mean, level, yeah. ability, the, the music reading ability, the um, just the musical knowledge that I was able to have sure. really was able to kind of help me set it, set a little bit of a part um, yeah. and just, you know, it'd be just that extra Thanks something yeah you know. absolutely and performing wise what's your what's your most favorite is it the dancing the singing or acting Do you well, have a favorite it's it's hard because I think okay. for me now the the dancing is I appreciate it more um a few years ago <laughs> yeah. I got um really injured during a show I was doing mm -hmm. and I uh, had to have a like, full knee surgery and learn relearn to walk and all these other things and so mm -hmm. now even just being part of these waltzes and everything like that, it means so much more when sure. you remember, you know, you were laying on a bed for That's three months right. and walk. Yeah. So I think I appreciate that more, but I mean, I'm always, I'm always a singer at heart, I guess. I yeah. Say. So in your dancing, are you learning? Like, do you have as far as background professionally prior to My Fair Lady, or is this something that you've had to learn you know, as you've gone, well, I would definitely say um, from the other musicals and things okay. I've done, been a lot of dancing and a lot of sure. that. I would say this waltz for all of us, yeah. even the dancer, dancer people in the cast was right. a full. We were all a little lost at first. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, not necessarily everything in the yeah. world, right? Yeah, right. And it's not necessarily something that you would normally train if you were going into a musical theater field or something like that. So we had, um, we when we were rehearsing in Kentucky, um, we had a wonderful guy, I cannot remember his name, but we had a wonderful guy who came out and um, yeah, a, a ballroom expert and they had come in for us and like give us kind of like a masterclass and show us all the actual techniques for everything. And then uh, it was taking that and being able to apply it into the show. And there are some amazing dancers in the show who are doing yeah. some really beautiful things. So it, it's, it's definitely visually amazing to watch okay. the show. Um, between uh, all of our dancing, all of our dancing in these outrageously beautiful costumes. Uh, these are Tony award-winning costumes for a reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you see the show, you really just, it's its beautiful. It's really stunning. Well, I'm excited because I plan on coming to see it next week. Jeez, yeah, so I can't wait to see you live in, in performance for sure because I love live theater. There's nothing right. like it. Yeah. And I, nothing like it. After COVID, I think there is yeah. definitely, you know, not having that. How was that for you, you know? Oh, goodness. That yeah, was just, very rough. Um, I mean, I was living... I was living in New York City right before then. I was actually on another tour um, with the American Spiritual Ensemble right before COVID. Like, so we right. finished like that Friday and I think New York shut down that Tuesday. Like it was that, that close. Yeah. And um, going on for about, it was about maybe like a year and a half before anything really started happening. It was, it was just, you feel so deprived. You feel yeah. like you didn't really know what was going on. And um, I think it makes us all appreciate it a lot more. Absolutely. Um, when we were in New Haven, we had this little girl who was at our stage door and was trying to get all of our signatures. And it was it was so sweet for us because yeah. um, until recently, really until this year, even the stage door people coming to, you know, get autographs and stuff, that wasn't allowed um, on wow. these tours because of COVID and everything. And so uh it was it was very sweet all of us got very excited and like all swarmed her because we were so absolutely. excited just yeah. to be able to connect with the audiences again and um it kind of made it feel a little bit a little bit back to normal I mean, absolutely yeah uh, there's no. still a lot of testing and we sure. our our um troika our, our production group has been amazing with keeping us all safe and keep making sure. us feel safe um yeah. as far as COVID because I mean we're we're going to a lot of different places it is absolutely so, yeah you, you have to stay nervous. healthy exactly because yeah, this is live exactly <laughs> you know, that's and, it yeah and we work with a lot of different local crews as well sure. so it's just you kind of are experiencing so many different people but thankfully um we've been all feeling safe and, and your vitamins any... <laughs> right that's right <laughs> 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think um, it is such a needed outlet, if you will, yeah. for our society to have the arts. Yeah. And and the other thing I know, just knowing a little bit about my Fair Lady production, mm-hmm. um, it touches, too, on some of some of the uh, things like, you know, socioeconomic status. Right. right? Yeah. Sure. And and also even treatment of women during that time. And I kind of, because I know using your your platform, your national platform, even global platform to kind of drive those kind of conversations, can you kind of speak to that and even, even being a part of this production? Yeah, well, what's so amazing about this Lincoln Center production is that they decided to, Bartlett Chair, who is the, um, the director for the production, decided okay. to go back to more of the original Pygmalion um, story, which is what okay. My Fair Lady's based on. And usually everybody thinks of it as kind of like a little love story, you know, everything mm-hmm. like that. Um, but our production is more of a love story with Eliza to herself. And mm-hmm. it's not about her finding the guy at the end. It's about her finding her own agency and her own um, self Boys. within yeah. within all of this. Um, because, I mean, the plot literally is him picking her up off the street and saying, oh, I can make her into a duchess and all this other <laughs> stuff. Properly. And a lot of times it can be a lot of things are happening to her. And I think what's great about our production is that it's more of things are happening to her, but she's taking full control of, of sure. herself. And yeah. um, it's not necessarily a me too kind of thing, like, I, exactly, no. but it, it does fit a little bit more along those boundaries. Because um, at the end of this, an end of our production, for example, they don't, they don't end up together. They, you know, wow. she leaves and has her own self and she walks out and able to walk on her own two feet. Right. And I think at that time, that's unheard of, right? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and even just her becoming a, this lady, you know, coming from sure. kind of the streets and the whole, a lot of the shows about language and the way that people speak and um, her being able to completely change who mm-hmm. she was, she, who she was, even though it didn't necessarily start as yeah. in the best light. It ends up, she's able to take control of that and use that to better herself. And sure. She doesn't yeah. need a man, you know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. There, there is definitely. Um, uh, it's very relatable to our times right, right now. That's what makes uh, these productions so uh, awesome because they're timeless in so many Absolutely. ways. Yeah, yeah. And it's been interpreted ways. in so many ways. ways. And what's actually, funny is I think right after we leave Fair Park. Uh, pretty woman is coming which is based right. on yeah. so, actually that, pretty that's pretty interesting woman. that's true I didn't think about that yeah. it would be a good segue yeah absolutely yeah and I know in this production like you have to have a British accent most of the British accents I know like yes. did you <laughs> as a child did you because that's a talent like yeah you know, um, I think that's in eight like, how did that come about? Oh, goodness. Mr. Conkey. This, this is a struggle. <laughs> okay. I will I not love- lie. This is a struggle. Um, yeah. Because we do the normal kind of RP British, which is what you would normally think, the very posh, you know, British okay. accent. And, we, and then the majority, a lot of us have to do the Cockney accent, which okay, is... Okay, yeah. <sighs> which that is dialogue. uh its own separate thing which i was scared of from the audition <laughs> wow so but, do you uh, have like a vocal coach that helps yeah we had an amazing um we had an amazing amazing diction coach who diction co- okay flew in for about two weeks during rehearsal period and worked with all of us and funny enough the role that i understudy is the main person then who speaks all the cockney and does all of the long really? monologues and, yes, cockney and everything that's right and my text itself, it started getting so Southern. The draw kept coming out. And she would be like, Richard, it's, remember, it's, it's not That's Texas. right. You made a little text, Brent. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so that took a while to get to get out of. But um, we, everyone in this show is having to wear multiple hats. And okay. um, like Eliza, for instance, has to be able to be the full Cockney and then be able to switch into the full um, wow. RP, classy British um dialect as well so we're there's a lot of pull and double duty um, Absolutely. Uh, everyone in this cast is so talented yeah. the fact that we were all able to do this in such a short amount of time and sure. be able to put the show together so quickly um it speaks to y'all's talent it really yeah, does it speaks yeah. really to the talent that they were yeah. able to bring together and so far it's been such a fantastic experience absolutely and can you kind of speak to Mr. Coleman how important it is to see a face like you 
yeah. you know, color. I know that's important to you. Um, yeah, the diversity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially coming from more of a classical background, which I was sure. really yeah. did not see anybody who looked like us at all. Right. Um, I can definitely say from my opera programs at LSU, from where I went for my undergrad and Florida State for my grad school, I was one of maybe a handful every time. And I think it really um, helps our people be able to like see that there's so many more avenues than what we think, hmm. that you're able to be so many more things than what yeah. you necessarily see yeah. all yeah. the time, if That's that makes funny. sense. Um, that you can be a singer and you don't necessarily have to just be a gospel singer or an R&B singer. Mm. You can be a classical singer. You can be a musical theater, Broadway type singer. You can do so much more. And I, I love that I'm at least able to, at least in a small part, be able to be a part of just that and just bringing Absolutely. more culture. Awareness. To, yeah. Yeah. More culture and awareness to our people, just because I feel like a lot of times we get pigeonholed into certain mm. things. And it's nice, it, it's amazing to see that. I, I didn't get to see that often. And Absolutely. one of the greatest things that I had was being able to find out those other Black artists to inspire me um, in what I was doing and when I was going through my um, training and my experiences. And even yeah. now, to this day, I, there's so many artists that I look up to. And I was able to be, like I think I mentioned earlier, I was able to be part of the American Spiritual Ensemble, which was yeah. a national... Um, choral group of Black opera singers and all coming to do spirituals across the country. Mm -hmm. And that experience being on that tour was just so enlightening for me. I was able to be mentored by so many different people and just to right. see these other great Black artists and how, how they work and how they carry themselves and how mm -hmm. they are able to navigate all of these different situations really Sure, was inspiring sure. to me and it's helped me in my career so much. Absolutely. No, that that's incredible. Yeah. And and then certainly uh know that that inspires you to keep going. Yeah. For sure. That's it. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I went to Cedar Hill, like, you know, it was predominantly Shout black. out to Cedar Hill. Cause exactly. I, <laughs> yeah. I actually had reached out to them as a surprise. I was gonna try to see if there was still a teacher around. That, so oh no! Was I think there, he just left. I know. I, who was there a teacher? Because they were so excited, and they were like, "Hey, please send us the video because we're going to stream it on all our platforms." Oh. So yeah, was there? A oh teacher, goodness! <laughs> yeah, that you want to give a shout out to? Yeah. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of who's still I there. Know who's spot. Oh, I know. <laughs> You're not old. <laughs> Right, because well, the teacher who really meant a lot to me, I, he left um, a okay. couple of years ago. It was Christopher Rhodes. He was oh, the wow. choral director there for God over a decade, and um, he was the one that really pushed me to like take myself and my singing seriously, yeah. and really that I could do this more than just being, you know, and being in choir and just having fun. Like I could actually really pursue this, and I wouldn't have ever went to LSU without him constantly being like hey this is a great place to go this is a great place to go and I was you know worried about whatever I was worried about at the time that's right yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. he really was one of the um he was one of, one of the catalysts to help me really feel that I could do yeah. this as that's a career and that I was better than what I even thought I was was at the time yeah. and so but always shout out to Cedar Hill, of course. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they're going to be so excited to, to know that they have one of their own yeah. doing this. And I know that has to be excited for you. Is it like a full circle moment for you? It really is. Um, yeah, I, doing it here. I haven't been able to do a show in Dallas since I think like 2017. Wow. I did show in okay. Fort and so it's been yeah, a it's while. It's, it's yeah. been a long time. And this is the first show in a while. My, my grandmother, all my family is coming. Mom's got all of her church friends coming. Oh, you know like it. She's like, my coming. baby's in town. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. That's so awesome. it really does kind of feel like a homecoming. A lot of um, old friends, old family is going to be there that I haven't got to see in a while also. And um, it's... Oh goodness, I'm really I'm excited. Now yeah. I'm like, getting a little nervous. Nervous. I was gonna Dallas, say, you know, a it, it feels a little different. <laughs> yeah, it feels a different when you know your grandma's in the audience. Right. <laughs> yes. But it really has um Dallas has meant a lot to me. Dallas was really what your roots, yeah. Set me up and really was my roots. I mean, I 
and I really am thankful for Cedar Hill um, mm -hmm. for being so invested in the arts that they were, right. because I never took lessons in before I went to college. I never was wow. really um, I, a lot. A lot of what other people would do who were going into the same field as me, they would have been taking lessons forever. They would have been right. doing this and that, and I really didn't. I was just a product of yeah. my public education, sure. and it was. I'm very thankful that Cedar Hill really took it seriously Absolutely. and really allowed us yeah. to that put the arts on the same level as they would put sports, as they would put yeah. up. Yeah, invest, uh, that's it, yeah. Yeah, because it's not it's not always, it's definitely not that's always right. a thing. And so, you know, I just, I, I love that. And I love the fact that, you know, uh, Cedar Hill was able to yeah. encourage us in, in our talents and not just, yeah. oh, everybody has to be a science person. Everybody has to be a math person. You can also be other things and they're just as important. I think the pandemic really showed that um, yeah. through TV, film, arts, music, all the other kind of things, that's what kept us sane right. during all those times and how important it is for people and yeah. really just how music and arts and theater and all that kind of stuff can yeah. really just change a kid's life and really yes. set them on a whole new path that they didn't even know it was possible for them. That's right, exactly. No, I, I personally have seen that benefits of it in my own Life. I have two children and yeah. my son, he didn't go the, you know, kind of the, the, the route that they typically put a boy in, right. right, with sports. He went the arts route and it built his confidence. It was so many and yeah. the friendships that he garnered as a result of that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I mean, yeah. granted, I was the kid in high school who did too much and was <laughs> literally in every Everywhere. single thing. They actually made an award for me senior year for being in <laughs> most extracurricular activities. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> right. Oh, gosh, it was, yes. it was insane. Yeah. I look back on that. And I was like, how did I have the energy? I right. Was, lead of yes. every play the in every choir the president of choir tennis cap i was just doing the most i don't know how man <laughs> yeah so you were destined to be doing what you're doing that's what that says because you like seem that. to feed off of that is that yeah just being yeah around. i mean yeah I, I i don't think about it too often but i guess that I, it was meant to be and it that's was it. It was kind of just, um, I'm thankful for my mother to be, who was able to, eventually got on board. Obviously, it's like a minute. Because <laughs> she's having to drive you to all that stuff, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. She she will, she will, if she was here, she would be the one to be like, uh, she deserves the most credit. That's for all the right. Drive and everything, right? She, Shout out to mom. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes, no, that's it, awesome. Once my entire family was, right. once they saw that it really was what I wanted to do and that it wasn't mm -hmm. just you know yeah joke or anything like that they right. really all supported me and that's great I've been my biggest champions that have came to operas and recitals Louisiana Florida all wow. other, all these other places yeah. uh, to come see me so I'm excited that they can yeah that's don't have great. to drive so far this time <laughs> that, that's right that's right that that is awesome and and it certainly is it definitely is what I think all of us who've reached any level of success come to realize you you didn't do it alone, right? Not it's at the, all. The Not community, all. yes, and in the African American community, um, we are a village, and that's that's Absolutely. awesome that you had that village, yeah. And yeah, I I tell you, what's next for you on the horizon? Well, I'm gonna be on this tour for a minute. <laughs> yeah, you sure are. That's true. Yeah, we just yeah. started it, so we have another seven months left wow. after this. Yeah. Oh we are hitting a lot of different places. Yeah, so you're going um, into 2023. Oh, for, <laughs> for sure. sure. Yeah. We're, going, we're going through May, at least. Okay. Um, and wow. we're kind of hitting our Texas route now, starting with Dallas. Um, we'll, okay. we'll go to Denver right after us, and we'll be back in Fort Worth. Okay. And then we kind of hit more of like Southern, uh, Southern Texas, Orange, okay. those kind of places, go through the South a little bit oh, um, before wow. we go on a little Christmas break, and then... Back, back on the in. road January 2nd in wow. Milwaukee in Milwaukee goodness oh you be cold freezing, freezing. <laughs> <That's> right <laughs> <laughs> yes my cold lady is what that'll be <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly but we'll get a little warmer we'll hit Miami and okay other places that's other awesome times, so. that is yeah, awesome. this is this is the plan for the for the, for the future for right now and yeah know, Seeing right. it come back to us. Well, I know you have an Instagram page, so yeah, our I, our viewers can follow you, so they can yeah. know where you're. Yeah, where you're at under your name. Yeah, Absolutely. I tell you, 
Mr. Cohn, it has been such a pleasure. It was such a pleasure with you. Yeah, I, I just you just have such a a wonderful and charismatic personality. So I can I'm looking forward to seeing you. Yes. In the, in the production, <laughs> I am. So so I, I will be cheering you on on I appreciate my that. seat. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I know our viewers appreciate you taking the time to to do this and. We wish you all the best. Thank you. As you continue. You. Yes, our pleasure. You take care. All right, you too. Okay, thank you so much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed that interview with cast member of My Fair Lady and Dallas native Richard Coleman. We also encourage you to head over to broadwaydallas.org website where you can click on show and events and see the upcoming dates and times for this current production of My Fair Lady. Don't forget also to check back as we will continue to showcase some of the upcoming Broadway Dallas productions that are coming down the pipeline. Thank you again for joining us and have a great day. Mm -hmm.